mini skirt on, dip my body in glitter. Pop, pop, form sneakers, all the boys want a picture. Two, two, four, we cause I make rich look richer. Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all. Hey guys, post-production Kristen here. Just wanted to stop in and give you guys a quick heads up that the quality of the audio on this episode is not going to be the best compared to all of my others. I thought it sounded okay while we were filming, but then when I looked back and I started editing, I'm like, oop. But nonetheless, it's still a great episode. Me and my guest had a blast getting to know each other. It was super fun. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This week I did use Zencaster to host my podcast for my guest, but it gave me a lot of issues. Like I said, with the quality of the audio, the video was going out towards the end, but either way we pushed through to give you guys the great content. So thank you for your patience as I figure this out. And I also realized I forgot to mention at the top of the episode to make sure that you guys like, comment and subscribe on YouTube. I'm on the road to my first 100 subscribers. And if you're listening on Spotify, thank you. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Spotify and rate the podcast five stars. And of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you give me that five star rating and leave me a review to let me know what you love the most about this episode. So again, Thanks for your patience and enjoy. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. You are now tuned in to the A Little Bit A Lot podcast. I'm your host, Kristen, and we've got a very, very special episode for you today. And I have a very, very special guest. Welcome to the pod, Deja. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for asking me to be here. You're my first person to ever ask me to collab. So I'm just so excited to be here for you. Yes, yes. You know, I wanted that black girl magic. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. My, my first show. Because you know like, the vibes. Yes, like it is so hard to find like other black girls that are in the mental health space. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like there's tons of us who are doing like black girl luxury, which is nice. Yes. But at the same time, that's not always, you know, relatable. Like mm -hmm. I want to get into the gags of somebody that's going to really get down to the nitty gritty mm -hmm. that really shares like the real and not saying that like black girl luxury and stuff like that, like isn't real and lifestyle content and th that type of influencer. But once I found your page, I was just like, oh, my God, I have Aww. to follow her. Like, I love mm -hmm. your content. Like, it's mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Literally, so, because yeah. I follow a lot of mental health content pages, but I don't follow that many podcast pages. So when I found yours, I was like, yeah, she's what? My people, empowered people, empowered people. So I was there. I was here for it. I was oh so happy God. when I found you. I sat here and made my boyfriend watch you with me. He was happy. Oh he enjoyed God. it. He thought your boyfriend was hilarious. He thinks your boyfriend is hilarious, mind you. He thinks he's so funny. So I'm just, yeah. And <laughs> also, I will say there's not a lot of black men either. Like, there's not a lot of black people, period, just in the industry. So I am happy that there is people like us out there now to, like, get other people involved get people thinking like oh maybe i can do that too you know other people would do it too because some people look at it as oh they're copying me but no i'm influencing you i want you to do this i want you to want to do better so i'm happy that you're doing it as well exactly thank you i appreciate that yeah. like I, I just love it so much i love the positivity that i always see on your page and like you said with me being a podcaster i know that it makes like my mental health awareness kind of different because it's not like I only just talk about that, but I do talk about it a lot. So I feel like I just try to give like a good mix you yeah. know, between like the comedy and then sharing like the good yeah, and, really. and, stuff <laughs> and everything. Girl, you was hilarious. <laughs> oh, thank you. It got me hooked. The first time I was like, oh yeah, this girl is funny. I was like, yeah, this, that, that's what I left in my first review. First episode I ever watched. I was like, yes. Yeah, she's, she's that made hard. me feel so special. I was like, oh, guessing me up yes nope the truth the truth yes ma'am <laughs> well i appreciate you and if you guys don't know deja is the host of is it technically so you mean to tell me yes okay so you mean to tell me podcast i listened to your entire show over oh. the, this past week don't just make so I me really get into it yes i really wanted to get into it help you get those streams as well yeah Make sure I give that review. Make sure I give that five-star rating. Thank you. And I just love the message that you share, 
not only just on your Instagram, which by the way, guys, she does have an Instagram. I got mm-hmm. my notes here just because I want to make sure that I put everything out there. She runs mm-hmm. um.mind.u mm-hmm. Instagram account, which is a mental health resource and community in which she empowers educates and advocates on top of that with the podcast so those two go hand in hand so make sure you guys check out yes yes yes. i have to make sure i do my research i can gas you up because having that mental health resource is so important Mm -hmm. and i feel like ever since i found pages like yours from switching over to like my podcast page Versus my main page where it was like oh. just the shade room and like all this other I kind was just of like talking about this. I swear to God, I was just talking about this with my boyfriend. I just said that like it gets so exhausting. I no shade, but I kept seeing blue face and Christian and it was stressing me out. I was uh, like, okay, let me just mm, I don't even go on there anymore. I can't do it. No, for real. I like I, I can't Twitter, take like, it. It's too much. I hate to see black women taking an L like this. Yes, I don't like it. I want better. And she's beautiful. Like, I want better she for you. She really is. Beautiful. Like, she's gorgeous. 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 Really gorgeous. And then, and like, just I just... Do better. They both really, they both really do need to do better. Uh, I know. Like, it, it, it's just crazy. Like, mm-hmm. especially now that there's, like, a son involved. Exactly. Like, girl, With a child. And- I just hope she stays in her new house and minds her business from mm-hmm. now on. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. House. Right. With the baby, let's just build with baby and just calm down, you know? I think right. she'll be okay, though. Yeah, I agree. I mean, as long as she just, you know, she seems like she's very, like, faith-based mm-hmm. and driven. So as long as she kind of goes into that and continues to build her community of support, right. I think she's slowly, like, waking up. So. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, so like I said, she's a podcast host, she runs an Instagram, a successful Instagram at that. Like, mm-hmm. you're almost at 1k, yeah, period. Oh, that is the goal. You know, the goal was just 500, and I it was <gasps> crazy. I was like, okay, okay, let's do it. Then. Let's do it. Then, so I was like, okay, yes. was like, you, you, you shoot too low, you shoot too low, and I was like, well, I just wanted to. You know, but okay, well, okay, small it. goals because those hit harder when you achieve them. Yes, definitely. I write them down. I write them down in my notes and I also write them down on hand. Yeah, I mm-hmm. love that. Like that mm-hmm. manifestation, but mm-hmm. along with that goes that hard work and like mm-hmm. you're putting that in. Like mm-hmm. the consistency that you show with your posting schedule is crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's up and at it and she's ready to go and she's yes. sharing that positivity. And I'm like, yes. this is just why I need to start my morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, you know, I I told you, like, I work overnight. So, usually my schedule is, like, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Or 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. So, I'm usually at work till 6 a.m. in the morning. So, excuse me. if I um, I usually can't sleep at night. Like, after I get off work, take my shower, eat my food. Like, now I'm up. So, one day out out of those weeks or one day out the week, I'll just schedule all my posts. Like, I'll make it and I'll just schedule it. So, I'll put it on Instagram, schedule my captions, everything. So, it's just, you know. And then I'll probably do that as well. Like, an audio later, just because, you know, you you just never know, like, how that'll work. But I just try to do it like that to be, just to be productive. Guys, take notes. Schedule your content, okay? You're already giving the people gems. Yeah. Because a lot of the influencers out here don't be on that type of time. They kind of just roll out of the bed and then figure it out in the morning. (laughs) <laughs> I think that is crazy. I'm just like, it's it's room for us all to eat. Like, I want everybody to win. I'm not out here trying to gatekeep. I'm like, if I figure something out, and nobody really told me anything. I'm just out here trial and error, trial and error. So if it works for me, and you ask me, I'm like, hey girl, do that. And if that don't work for me, I'm like, this didn't work for me, but maybe you can try it and see if it works for you, and go from there. Yes, I love mm-hmm. it. Yes. So. I was listening to more of your podcast, like I said, and there was a couple things that I wanted to talk about with you mm-hmm. about how you said that you were a grad in clinical mental health counseling. Yes, yes. Like, how did you get into that? Like, what inspired you to Ooh. kind of go towards that field? Because I know you mentioned you love psychology. Mm-hmm. Yes, so ma'am. is that kind of what dri- drove that? Like, Definitely. I don't know, just kind of give us an overview into how you got into Definitely. that mental health space. So it is a big, long story just to give you like a shorter version of it. Um, it definitely started with psychology. It goes even further than undergraduate. It goes all the way back to 10th grade, actually. I had a teacher. Her name was Mrs. Worrell. She is amazing. To this day, we're still in contact. She was one of those people who, yes, so she nice. left an imprint on me. She changed my life. And it's crazy because she was my 10th grade 
American government teacher. Wow. And she also taught AP psychology. But I was taking government and she had the textbooks out. And I would be done with my work and she'd be like, Deja, go do something, go do something else. And I would see the textbooks for psychology over there. And I would just grab it and start reading the book. And I would just be in her class. I'm supposed to be at the next class. I'm still in her class, just reading the book, reading the book. So she was like, okay, you better sign up next semester. You better sign up. So next time I signed up and from there it was history. It was oh I went goodness. to college for psychology and I was like, okay, I have to get my graduate because I know that I want to open my own private practice. So like I have a whole lot. Yes, I have a lot, a lot of goals. So I just want to make sure I hit every note. So that that, that is the end goal for you. Mm -hmm. Having your own private practice. Yes, That is iconic. We need more black yes. women in this yes. space. I'm telling yes. you guys. Yes. And I want it for be. I want it to be for pediatrics. So I do want it <gasps> to be for children. I feel like we need it especially for black people because you know i don't want to make it about race but a lot of people are more comfortable talking to somebody who looks like them you know what i'm saying and, and a lot of black My homes we know black <laughs> and in our, in our in our homes you know like a lot of black parents they're like ain't there's no such thing as mental health you know and a lot of black yep. homes. so they need somebody else that's out there and willing to listen out there and willing to tell them how they're feeling isn't crazy how you're feeling does matter because they'll try to just beat it out of you or just try to ignore you or try to just tell you shake it off and not really acknowledge it and that's why people grow up to not to be emotionally immature honestly that's how yes emotional immaturity i feel like is a big thing within mm -hmm. the black community mm -hmm. it's something that i feel like needs to be talked about a lot more definitely and the point that you made with having someone that looks like you i feel like that a lot of the times helps parents be more receptive like you said to getting that information exactly where there's yes. someone that looks like them and you're like okay there's this you know black woman who's telling me that maybe my kid needs help mm -hmm. then they're gonna be like okay you know i guess i listen mm -hmm. and then the child was able to get the help that they need but if it was the other way around they'll be like who this is trying to tell me like girl they just trying to help yeah. you like yes so definitely yeah I and that's why i'm just so thankful that and you know with my family that they've never been the type to shy away from the mental health topic like mm -hmm. as soon as my parents got a divorce my mom was like i'm gonna get you guys a therapist stat oh wow but i know that not that's every, beautiful yeah not every black household is that way at all you know we, we could have had a mom my mom could have just been like t you know bug it out you'll be fine right because i didn't even know that i needed to talk to somebody to process those feelings mm -hmm. i thought i was just gonna have to kind of just be like okay this is what it is and how old were you if you don't mind me asking um i was in eighth grade so i, I forget what age that makes me okay, yeah. Girl, me, maybe me like too. 13 14 or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. So you knew yeah. what was going on. You were older. Right. Yeah. And so since my sister, me and my sister are three years and nine months apart, she was a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was good for her even then, too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. She was a little bit younger and kind of didn't really know what was going on as much. So she put us both with the same therapist, mm -hmm. which in the end we learned like we need separate ones. But <laughs> yeah, but she 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 did her big one, though. She's she tried. She did a really good job. She she did. A, she did good. Yes, yes. So I, I think that what you're doing is just so admirable. Like, like you said, in moments like that, even if it's just for something so simple, really, divorce isn't a simple thing. It's right. actually a, a big uh, crisis mm -hmm. that can happen in your life. But something like that, just even getting, you know, therapy just for the little time that I had it at first, you know, for children is important. Right. It definitely so, is because I, I can relate because my parents did get divorced as well. It happened when I was seven years old. I believe I was in first grade and I definitely did not get the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other end of the stick, girlfriend. I did not get the therapy. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Like even now, before you just said that, I, it never dawned on me that maybe I did need that. Right. Yeah, Maybe I did need that. I never really. Yeah. I never really yeah. because I was pretty angry. Like I was angry. I don't really know why. So, you know, no, I, I feel the same. I had anger as well. Right. And I didn't really know why. And I think that I've come such a long way in my personality when it comes mm -hmm. to that, because I really used to just be like a little booger. Like right. after that divorce, I feel like I kind of just was like rude to my sister. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. weren't really on good terms. I was always messing with her. And I felt like my way of lashing out was just like being rude and like right. being annoying a lot of and displaced like anger yeah like mm -hmm. just, right you you always have the great time oh, everything. 
displaced anger is what it was. Literally, so though. Once I got in therapy, my therapist was like, you need to establish boundaries and leave her alone. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I guess you're right. <laughs> Literally. And then for me, it wasn't even the therapist. It was it was that teacher in 10th grade and like reading the books and just learning and doing because I'm just so into it I I will literally read psychology books to go to sleep like stuff like that like I'm so what is it about psychology that you love so much because that's one question that I wanted to ask you because when I went to school I went to school for medical coding and billing I got my Mm -hmm. um degree in that and for some reason I had to take one psychology class I freaking hated it even though I love all things like mental health but I think it was because my psychology teacher was awful because I don't know if you mm-hmm. heard my last podcast episode like a while back where I talked about a story from when my teacher put me on blast because I didn't want to be in a group anymore. That was that teacher. And I Why had beef with her. Why would she do that? I know. Why would you put me on blast? You know? Like I told you this in confidence, first of all. Okay. She was awful. Oh, okay, lady. But for me, I don't know. Like, if it if it's not this, I don't know what else I would do. Honestly, like, I advocate for Plan Bs and having a backup plan, but I don't have one. Like, if I wasn't doing something where, if I wasn't doing something in the psychology field, I just don't know what I would do. I just want to help people. I've always just wanted to help people. I had a time in my life where I felt like I didn't have anybody, and it's crazy because I have a big family. My family is really big, but I was like, I, I made a post today, like, you can have relatives but no family you can have a, mm. a whole bunch of relatives but you can you know feel so lonely and being younger like now i'm older so i really don't you know i've grown and i'm i'm okay but back when i was a child like i needed them i felt like i needed them i needed that community and i feel like there's so many other kids that feel that way even if they don't want to say it they feel that way because they're lashing out or they're doing it other ways so i just want to be that person that's there for them because I didn't have anybody, so somebody needs somebody. Everybody needs somebody. So if I can help one person, I did my job. Oh, my God. I oh love God. that. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to be the advocate for somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you mentioned also in an episode that you worked with, like, autistic children. Was that, like, a I thing? did. I did. I did. Okay. I'm so sad. I never got to update you guys about that. I'm, you gave me the opportunity. So, boom. Now I work I work as a server. I think I told you guys that I serve and I was bartending on the side for a little second, but I stopped that, y'all, because I don't like that. So I oh, served. What time I, you said you were in the bartending school? I did not like it. Well, I was training. I was training at my job to bartend. And I, I got past training and I was on the floor, but you know when like you have drinks on the menu and then you have off drinks, off menu drinks, and somebody came into the, the bar, like I had all I was feeling myself, okay? I had all the drinks down, I memorized everything. I'm <laughs> he came in and asked for some I don't even know I don't even know what it was I don't even know what it was I said huh pardon <laughs> what did, excuse me I had to google it and then I was just like in my head I'm so anxious he's watching me I can't like mm, I'm just like it was too much it was too much I said no never mind y'all I'll just go back to serving so yeah but so I had applied because I was so sick of serving I applied for jobs I'm like I got my psychology degree I'm not doing anything with it what did I go to school for Arr! I was having one of those moments y'all so I yeah. started applying for jobs and I got the ABA therapy job and it was so amazing I did it for two weeks and it was so amazing y'all I stopped doing it because of transportation issues I just had problems getting there yeah but they were so sweet. everything about it was amazing I have no complaints the pay was well the people were nice the kids were amazing everything was amazing from the training it was hands-on they let you go with kids multiple kids throughout the day you were one-on-one with children but you had four to five kids a day so you got Mm. a relationship with those kids and um the abas made the plans and the rbts which were the registered behavior technicians they implemented those plans so if they said the child needs to you know learn how to use the restroom you would help them step by step like you go here you do that you do this you wash your hands you do all this and that so that's what we did and it was so amazing but i was really sad that i had to go but they told me anytime i wanted to come back that i could and that's for anybody who has a psychology degree. Like, people tell you you can't do anything. That's not true. You can go do that. All you have to do is go take a test. That's it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. No one says, that's simple test. then. Mm-hmm. Take your test. Get your hours. It's, it's different for states, I believe, state by state. But just, you know, Google how to become a registered behavior technician or RBT. And then you can do it, I believe, like within a two-week span. And then you can be on the floor. You can be with the child even before you're done like they'll work with you and then you can be registered within two weeks 
Oh my god. Yeah. So that's amazing. That's iconic. Yeah. I love that so much. And I think that once you said that, that just piqued my interest. Um, specifically because my sister's on the spectrum and mm-hmm. she's like a late diagnosed um autistic individual. <laughs> How do you? Suppose, I don't know the proper way to say that. I know, <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, she's late diagnosed, mm-hmm. and like I think that hearing that you were working with you know children on the spectrum for however you know period it may, may have been, I feel like right. it's such a good thing, and I think it speaks mm-hmm. to you know your character you. because I know that you know working with children or just people in general on the spectrum, like usually those people are just compassionate mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that just spoke volumes to you me. You have to have because, patience. A lot of people yes. don't have patience and they'll try to do a job that they know they don't have patience for. Don't be working with these kids and you know you don't got no patience because it's not their fault. Even people that are, even kids that are not on the spectrum, just children in general, people don't have patience and they try to work with children and that's not right. It's not fair to them because they have a right to have a childhood. You know, they have a right to be children. A lot of people try to make kids grow up so fast like no, you don't want this. You don't want these bills. You don't want these problems. Let them have a life, you know? Let them have a life. I'm, I advocate for that. I ha- I advocate for children being kids, literally. Let kids be kids. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I think that the, we need more people like that mm-hmm. um, who work in that field because, you know, for a long time, I know my sister, once she got her diagnosis, just felt like if we'd known sooner, she would have been able to get the help that she needed. Mm-hmm. So to have people like you who are, you know, accessible and you know willing to work in that field, I know, you know, makes such a good impact on those kids. So like right now we're kind of in the, you know, space where we're trying to find like different programs that are mm-hmm. out there for, you know, autistic adults. So that way she can be able to have community and stuff oh, like that's that. So but, nice. I love that. Yeah. So it's, it's been a process, you know, because we've got so many other things to work out. But yeah, we've been looking into that. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, my gosh, you mm-hmm. know, I love mm-hmm. anyone who, you know, supports working with, you know, people that are on the spectrum. Of course. Because I know sometimes like some people act like they're just so strange. Which is weird to so me. Difficult. And it's like, yeah, what? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't like that. And, you know, people, people are so judgmental. Yeah. People are some of the smartest people ever. They're so smart. They're so smart. They're so sweet. Oh, my God. They're so sweet. I know when I was working there for the period of time, there was one particular child. She um she couldn't speak properly. She couldn't get her words out. So they had an iPad for her. So she could touch the words out so she could make her sentences for what she wanted. Like she could say, oh, I want chips or I want water or I want this. And she was so sweet. She'd be like, I want a hug. She was the sweetest girl ever. She had a little girl, little girl. I think she was like eight, seven, eight years old. So sweet. So and that's sweet. nice. That's my like, sister that just, doesn't like her. It just her. brightened my heart. <laughs> it just brightened my heart. It really did. It really did. I was, and I was, at this time, I was doing both jobs. So I was still serving at nights. So I was going there in the morning and serving at night. And I was having so much fun in the morning. And I go to work at night and I'd be like, here we go. She's a working girl. girly though. She's getting to the money though. Oh, you have to. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Gotta make the dreams come true. School is not cheap. Mm-hmm. I know that. <laughs> Student loans still yes. out here trying to get me. You know how they do. You know how they do. I know how they do. Yes. Well, I'm just really looking forward to your future. You know, Thank when you. it comes to that. Mm-hmm. And I just hope that you get another opportunity to, you know, get back into the things with, you know, that job because it seems like you light up when you talk about yes. it. It was such a good experience. Yes. That makes yes. me feel so good that you say that because I really have been thinking how unhappy I am at my job. I'm not going to lie. I really do not like being there. And it's not them. It's just it. Like just sometimes the customers are just really mean. And, you know, we don't get paid for that. You know, you get paid two thirteen an hour to be a server. I don't know if you know, like, that's how much. That's, that's it. So if people don't tip you, you know, you're out here not making anything. And, you know, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, you should tip. Because sometimes people just don't have money. Like, I'm not pocket watching you. Like, that's cool. But it's just like, for our circumstances, for me, it's just, it just doesn't. And I just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, I agree. I, I When I worked in customer service, when I worked at a restaurant, mm-hmm. it was not it. I, yeah. I literally thought about it the other day when I passed by my old job. Oh, I need to make a podcast episode about this one time when this guy kind of threw a sandwich at me, it wasn't technically at me, but it was like towards the counter. And I'm like, 
what is the problem? I know you didn't like it, but why, why are you this angry? And that's why I, I'm like, calm down. I will get you another sandwich. We can work this out. Use your words. I I can't deal with that. Like, yeah, I and that's the it. emotional immaturity that we were talking about exactly. earlier. These mm -hmm. people just don't know how to properly exactly. I'm like, take it in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, all I, you I have mean, to do is I say just, something. Man. Yes, I just learned like you know what? It's better for me to have compassion in the end because you don't have the tools that you need to be a nice person. Mm -hmm. That's not on me, and I can't let that affect my day. So like once I shift my perspective with that job, it helped a lot. But exactly. oh my god, I feel you. Same, it's same. Because I had to just sometimes I just walk away from these people because I'm like, okay, <laughs> y'all playing now, y'all talking to me crazy. I have to just walk away. I mean, like, okay. <laughs> They get me so mad, girl. I'm like, y'all not gonna get me on my character, and I'm not even getting paid for this. That's what I be thinking, like, you know. And that's one thing that you did talk about. Um, I think on one of your posts, or was it on your podcast about like getting out of your character mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I how think that's the podcast episode. Yes, mm -hmm, like, cause could you elaborate more on that for the people who haven't heard? <laughs> listen, listen. You have to work on yourself because I know me personally. I know how I can get. I do know. I'm not out here saying I'm perfect because I'm definitely not perfect. I have, sometimes I have a low tolerance. Sometimes I get irritated quickly. I really just have to get in tune with myself and understand like I'm growing. So everybody, everybody else around me is growing too. And I can't be that person who's like, oh, well, they should be at this level of growth. Because who am I to say that? They're still trying to grow. You know, they're still trying to get better. So I'm just the type of person where I just try to walk away from the situation. I think about it before I say it. Because if I don't, if I think about it and it doesn't sound good, I just don't even say it. If you think it doesn't sound good, don't say it. Like if you're not for certain that it's okay, just don't even do it. That's, That's good advice. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of people take the time to think about what they have to say exactly. before they say it and how it may affect others. Mm -hmm. They just do. like it is not worth getting out of your character from a, for a moment of irritation or losing your job. Like I'm not going to lose my job, my livelihood, my life. Like all of this for a sandwich, right? Like, <laughs> come on, come on, no, no. No. exactly oh my gosh okay so we talked about you know what you did for school mm -hmm. you know what you've worked in mm -hmm. your instagram account the positivity mm -hmm. you're spreading with that with your podcast mm -hmm. and then the one main component that i also wanted to talk to you about um that i told you i wanted to discuss today was like the fear of failure and the fear oh, of putting gosh. yourself out there because this, this is, is something that i haven't talked about on my episode and i thought you were the perfect person to talk about this with um because Fear of failure is something that has impacted me severely. Like it impacted me when it came to starting this podcast, mm -hmm. when it came to like my social media posts, you kind of constantly get stuck in the what ifs, what if it doesn't go well? Right. And in the end, it's like, it turns out good. Oh my you put gosh. positive energy into it. You're going to get positive energy back. Talking but, to you makes me feel so good right now because everything you're saying, I felt the exact same way. Yes. Verbatim, word for word. Everything you're saying, I felt the exact same way. So what are your thoughts on like the fear of the fear of failure? I just for me, it was I had to stop looking at it as failure. Cause if I'm doing something I've never done before, obviously it's not gonna be perfect. You know what I'm saying? If I did it the first time and it wasn't how I how I pictured it being, that next time I just go a little better the next time. So if I do better that if I do worse that next time, then maybe you can say, okay. Well, maybe I failed or maybe I just didn't do as good. Let me do a little better. You know, I just I was very nervous about starting my podcast, especially on YouTube, because I don't <sighs> like people looking at me. I really don't like being looked at because I Same. I was like very insecure for a period of time and like all this other good stuff. So like I just have like really bad anxiety. So I don't like looking at people. I'm bad with the eye contact. Like I'm really bad with all of that. So for me, it was just like, OK, Deja, is this what you want to do or not? And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. The pros outweighed the cons. So I just did it. You know, I just did it. I took the chance and I just did it. And I failed a couple of times because I started this page. I literally just saw my um, highlights pop up in my on my main page. I started it in November of last year. So, it, yeah, oh, it's been a year now. My year. Just about, yes. And it's crazy. It's been one year and I just started taking it consistently. 
a couple yeah. months ago, you know, it was like, okay, I would do it. I would maybe post like once a week or I would go stop for a week or something like that. But I started being consistent. I made sure this is what I wanted to do. This is what I fell in love with. Let me just try and take the feedback wow. in. Try and take the feedback in. And that's what I did. And it's been going better ever since. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that that's such an important lesson that you said where you have to just do it. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times people say that often, but it's like, it is so true. I think right. that I kind of wanted to give like, you know, our audience like a moment to just reiterate that, mm -hmm. that if this is something that you're considering going into or not even just this field, but just anything, anything that you want to right. pursue, you have to just do it. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what anybody says. All of that. Because exactly. people will try to talk down on what you want to do. It's not, And don't even think of it as proving them wrong. Because a lot of people, they'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to go prove them wrong. Forget them. It's not even about them. This is what you wanted to do. So go do that. Period. That's it. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. That is a good takeaway. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for other people. No. Nope. Focus on you. That's all that matters. Because if you, even if you were to do it because you're trying to prove them wrong, now they can say, well, oh, you didn't even do it like that. You didn't even do it like this. And they're going to try to one-up you every time. Every time they're going to try to one-up you. Now, are you doing this for you or are you doing this for them? You know, you're never exactly. going to be happy trying to fulfill their expectations. No. Right. I think the only expectations that you need to, you know, try to fulfill are the ones that you put for yourself. Exactly. And even then, at the same token, don't put too many on yourself at right. the same time. Right. Because <laughs> people will do that. They'll be like, why do you do And then they'll feel so burnt out and they'll be just so hard on themselves. Just take it one thing at a time. You know, one thing at a time. Yeah. And I think that that's one thing that I have to constantly remind myself when I Same. set a goal because I'm just like, okay, well, I should be at this or I should be at that. And then it's so Same. easy to compare yourself mm -hmm. and that situation. And I have to mm -hmm. remind myself, like, I've only doing been doing this said certain thing for, you know, so often. For You're doing podcast. amazing, first of all. You're doing Thank amazing. You. You're doing amazing. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Let, let's 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 stop. You're doing amazing. I remember I was listening to you. I feel like I heard you say you started your podcast like three months ago. How yeah, many, two. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? What did she say? I had to rewind it. I said, did she, did she just say three months? Does she mean years? Like, what is she saying to me? What is she saying to me? So you do it. You do it so effortlessly. It is. You just talk so effortlessly. You're so funny. Like you're hilarious. You should be talking. If it's not meant to help, you need to be on somebody's show. You gotta be talking to somebody because you're hilarious, first of all. And yeah, I just I just loved you. And then I saw that you got your sponsorship and I was so happy for you. I'm like, yeah, she's moving up, she's doing big things, as you should. So yeah, I love that for you. I love it all for you. Thank so don't, you. Comparison is a thief of joy, you know. I tell people to really just Celebrate your little wins, you know, take the little victories, because if you keep, you know, you'll set one goal and then you'll set another one. Just take that goal and celebrate it first, you know, honor that one first before you worry about the next one. This 50 set of followers, this 100 set of followers, or listeners, or subscribers, anything like that. Because I've been getting hard on myself, because yes. that one's hard. Growing on YouTube is really hard because a lot of people don't want to click from this link to that link and do all this, that, and the third. I feel like when you get people on YouTube, those are some real loyal people. Those are some real loyal people. <laughs> That's true. I did not realize what I was signing up for until I got in it. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I've been stuck at this many subscribers for a while. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's only been two months, but still, I'm like, oh, this is going to take a lot longer than I thought. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. But I say if you enjoy it, keep doing it. Yeah. And that's one thing that I have to make sure that I remind myself and I want, you know, you guys in the audience to remind yourselves of that at the end of the day, like if it is something you enjoy, keep continuing to give it a chance right you know so yeah and i think that one important thing that i wanted to know about like the fear fear of failure is that sometimes i think that it's something that you almost should even embrace at the same time because if you don't know failure how are you going to truly appreciate success exactly exactly and hello I literally just told my friend today, I, cause he was talking about how he was upset about like not having money. He wanted to, you know, be financially stable. Stuff and, third. and I was like, you know, you're young, you know, you're young, you're allowed to make mistakes and figure out how you're going to navigate through this job and figure out your career. You know, you just turned 22. You're trying to figure out your life. I said, if you don't ever hit rock bottom, how are you going to appreciate it when you get it? 
How are you going to appreciate the money when you have it? I said money is going to come to you in abundance. You just need to start talking like it, acting like it, and go get it. Because you keep saying, oh, I'm broke, I'm broke. Don't say that. I said, don't even say that. Like, don't even put that in the air. Don't even know. But I was like, yeah, you you have to you have to experience one thing to appreciate the other, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like that was something that I really wanted to make sure that I brought up when I was thinking about this topic. And I think that, you know, like you, the point that you made with like appreciating the little wins is something mm -hmm. that is so important because like to bring it back, as always with the mental health topic, you know, I'm going to talk about therapy. Got to. My therapist always tells me that when I, whenever I like let her know, oh, th I did this or something happened. And she's like, make sure you take time to sit in that this weekend mm -hmm. and celebrate it. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. you going out to eat or doing, our, you know, this or the other, you know, treat yourself to some, you know, lunch and really right. like hone in on how this, you know, the celebratory moment makes you feel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for those out there, I think that that's something that's important. And it's, it sounds cliche, but really do it. Like, you really have to celebrate yourself because if you don't, who will? You know, it doesn't have to be something grand. Like you said, it could be like a bag of chips at the store, your favorite bag of chips or your favorite drink. Do something that you know is going to brighten your day up. I know me, I work at a seafood restaurant, so I'll bring home a crab cluster real quick. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I did it last night. That you brought I said, you know that what? I worked up. hard. <laughs> I mean, I said, I worked hard. Let me bring home some crab. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I love a seafood boil. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly. I, I reckon it's like a Cajun seafood spot. Oh my God! Yes, mm -hmm. I hit hit him up with that garlic seasoning mm -hmm. and yes, ma'am, <laughs> garlic butter, the Cajun seasoning, all of that. No, yeah, that literally was my last celebratory meal for the podcast. I got a seafood boil. Literally, I got crab last night. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah, I don't eat crawfish. Do you eat that? No, yeah, me I don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They eat that out here. They love it. They go crazy. And it's like one of those seasonal type of things. So like it's not in season right now. So like they call, do you have crawfish? And I'm like, no. They're like, well, do you have it frozen? I'm like, no, we don't do that here. Like we we only do <laughs> we only do live crawfish here. <laughs> we I say, <laughs> you know, they go crazy for it. We have everything else. We have the crab. We have shrimp. Everything they have the alligator sausages, they have everything. Yeah, they have everything. Oh my god, not the alligator, mm -hmm. that's kind of fancy. They don't have that mm -hmm. at my local seafood spot. But <laughs> my boyfriend did try the craw uh, crawfish once, and I looked at the head and I said, I'll pass. And it's like they, they, I think they eat it from like the butt. I don't know, to me, yeah, it's too much work to open it for that little bit of meat. I'd rather just crack open a crab leg and do 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 do, you know, that's what I like. You know, I feel that way about snow crab, like if oh. you don't give me a king crab. I love snow crab. Hold on now. Let's bring it back. We were doing so well. Okay, but yeah. I tried Dungeness crab for the first time the other day. It was cool, you know. I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It had a sweeter flavor, I feel like. But yeah. I feel like the legs are shorter. I'm not getting right. enough meat, I feel like. I feel like snow crab legs give you a good amount of meat. Those king crab legs are expensive. They're already expensive, girlfriend. At my restaurant, though, it's sixty dollars, and people say Same. that's pretty good. Ours is fifty. Oh no, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of times, like if I want like a cheap boil, I'll just do like everything but the crab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta get the you gotta get the corn, the sausage, yeah, all of that. Yeah, so the moral of the story is, guys, if you're into seafood boils, treat yourself to a boil when you want to celebrate you a win. You have to get period. some crab, get a little potato, you don't got to get everything, you know, something exactly. small. Right, like it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be this extravagant thing. I think a lot of times people feel like when it comes to seafood boils, you got to get all the fixings, but it's like you yeah. can get that you know, boil feel with not getting all the stuff. Like that's true. sometimes I'll just get like some shrimp and potatoes and that's mm -hmm. not for me. So sometimes people will come in the restaurant, they're like, Can I get just the size? I'm like, Of course. You can get just potatoes and corn if you want. You can Ooh. get just mushrooms, just sausage. You know you don't even have to get a meat at all. If you don't well, that's to. a good idea too. Mm -hmm. Honestly pairing that with something if you make it at home and exactly. then going just to get some sides, period. Exactly. Or even get like the sausage and get it in the sauce that they do and make a little sandwich at home. Mm -hmm. Lettuce. I be doing that all the time. A po boy moment. Yes, that's what I we make po boys. That's what we do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, you know I recently it. got into po boys like not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this is making me hungry. Uh 
<laughs> and it's crazy. I've never even heard of like the whole po' boy term. I feel like until I moved out here, like. I don't really? feel like I heard it when I was in Georgia. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was under a rock, though, guys. So if you're, like, from Georgia listening, don't, like, throw anything at me. But, like, I feel no, like yeah. I never heard the term, like, just sandwich. Like, just a sub. Just a sub. It, I know. That's why I'm, like, it is just a sub. So why yeah. is it called Pull Boy? Is it because of the, like, sauce that they use? I, no I don't really clue. understand I have that. no clue. I, I have no clue. We, I mean, I wouldn't say we got off topic because, like, it has to do with celebrating your <laughs> right, right. into the table boil, but <laughs> but I wanted to also ask you, like, what are some other things that you do right to prioritize, like, your mental health? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Oh, oh, you're asking me. I thought you were going to yeah. ask the viewers. What do I do? So, I, like I tell you, I do work a lot. So, I work at night. So, a lot of times in the morning, I am sleep all the time. I do sleep a lot. So, I do have my dog. So I'm a homebody. I'm always home a lot. Me and my pup, we will go out for walks around the town. I read books. Me and my boyfriend will go out and try different food spots. That's really our thing. Because we don't like party and stuff like that. So we like to go out and eat. So we'll go out Same. and have different foods. That's really my thing. I love wings. Since I've been here, I haven't found a wing spot that I like. So, yes. That is a crime. They're just so freaking big. I don't like big wings. Like, <gasps> see, I knew it. Like, they're just so same in like this, like so many ways. Yeah, I don't I like do a big wing wings. either. Mm. My mom always complains, but it's like, no, I don't want all of that. Yeah, it's too much. It's just too much. I just don't like it. So, like, I do things like that. I just like to do things that truly make me happy, and it doesn't take a lot to make me happy. I could just sit down and watch. A television show. I love Chrono Minds. I love Grey's Anatomy. Like I just sit here and watch my favorite sitcoms. Read a book. Light a candle. Just chill. Yeah. So are you intentional about like setting those vibes? Because I am definitely, too. definitely. I have to set the whole ambiance. Like it's raining. It has been. It never rains in Texas. It has been raining lately. So like I've been. All the lights are off. All the freaking everything's just like dim. I have the lights on. It's just so calming. I'm finally off. I set my rain sounds. Have to have my rain sounds. Everything. I, everything is intentional. Definitely. Oh my god, definitely. I love that. I like rain sounds as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. my rain sounds, I have a little twist on it because you know I love the game Animal Crossing. So mm -hmm. I'll have like Animal Crossing music with rain that is sounds cool. in the I background. Like I like that. I like that. <laughs> Why did my boyfriend yesterday, he put on some Spongebob theme music in the background. I said, I, I said, baby, I can't go to sleep to this. I can't, I can't go to sleep to this. What is this? No, sir. It has to be something calming. He was, he thought it was the funniest thing ever. It was, so, it was calming for him. I said, you got to go sleep somewhere else because in this room, I need the rain or the thunder. Even like, I can't do the bird sounds because I told you I don't like birds. I told you I don't like that. Oh my god. But the Spongebob, that was his inner child. That was his his moment. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But that ostrich chased me, girl. Mm -mm. I do not know. No, I can't wait to hear about that yes. story. Yes, I can't. It's Is that coming tomorrow, next so. week? Tomorrow. When is that episode coming? Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, make sure you guys tune into yeah. that because I cannot wait to hear about this story. And I have the video footage. Can you believe my dad still has it all these years later? I was like, I have him recording. Years. Yes, yes, real live footage. This is real. This is not a. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. It's not a game. It's not a lie. An ostrich. Do you know how no. big those are? That yeah, is really you terrifying. You probably thought the end was near. I thought the end was there. I thought this was the. end. I thought this was the end. I was so scared. You can hear me in the video. I can't wait to show you. I can't wait to show you. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Well, you guys need to make sure you tune in to her podcast episode because the ostrich story is probably going to be iconic. Yes. That reminds me of the time that I got chased by a pit bull when I was like seven. He literally okay. almost bit my butt. It was insane. <laughs> Not the butt. What the heck? What the heck? Usually they try to go for the leg, you know, maybe the foot, but you went for my booty. Literally, straight booty cheek. It was crazy. My dad looks up, he sees me running, and he's like, What do I do? My mom that and dad were always in the front to the yard. Rescue, okay. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how. Like, thank God that the universe always places my dad in those crazy situations. You but know, he's going to come through. I really love that for you. I really love that you talk about your dad in a positive light because especially in our community, I feel like there's not a lot of people who have their father present. And if they do, a lot of them don't really get along, you know? Yeah. So I really, I really, it really does brighten my day when I hear you say that. Like when I saw you say your dad made that, 
that painting for you. I was yes. like, oh, that is so sweet. I love that. I said, mm -hmm, Dad, step it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just so thankful. And it's like, I always like to mention, like, my mom is just as supportive. But mm -hmm. I think that that's just like my dad's love language. Mm -hmm. You know, like my mom kind of is more of like the quiet supporter. And she's right. kind of going to just, you know, make sure that she's there to give me the things I need. Like the other day, she's like calling me and was like, what deodorant does Juwan wear? She's going to look out me for in ways like that. Aww, so so then my dad, it's like, he's just always going to kind of like craft me little cute things and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I agree. Like, I love to be able to just talk about like black fathers in a good light. Right. You know, because it's not really like the best topic of conversation right now with people mm -hmm. like Drew Face who are kind of just making dads out there look bad. Mm -hmm. Crazy. He's a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people earlier. I don't like to tell people what to do with their life, but whew, yeah, no, that's a lot real. right there. That's a lot. Oh my I'm gosh. Exactly. So I think that this is going to bring us to the end where we have our, you know, my segment that I love to do favorite thing of the week. Yes. Favorite thing of the week. Favorite thing of the week. You know, I got to do the song. You yes. I, I love song. it. I love it. <laughs> So, do you happen to have a favorite thing of this week or this past week? Let's think. Let's think. Let me think good for you. Mm, from this past week. Okay, let's think. Can it be, it can be anything? Yes, it can be anything. It can be an activity that you did, something that you saw, music you've been feeling, games, whatever. Okay. It's a little short story. It's not long at all. I promise y'all. My favorite thing of the week, I tell y'all, I work every day of my life, so I'm sorry I come back to work. But it was a table that I had. I had the most amazing table. So every time you have a birthday, we sing happy birthday. Well, you don't have to, but I do it because I'm one of those people who go up above and beyond for my customers because I love them. So I was sung happy birthday for this lady, and she was turnt, y'all. She was so, so turnt. She remixed the, like, we sing happy birthday to regular, happy, happy birthday, you know, just regular happy birthday for my crew. And here she goes. Remix, turn it up, and this girl started twerking in the middle of the restaurant. I swear I can't, I cannot make this up. She just started Literally. twerking in the middle of the restaurant. And I was just like, okay. it was just so <laughs> funny. Everybody was the kitchen, our kitchen, like they uh they're uh, primarily Hispanic, so you know they don't speak good English, but they can see us and they open the doors and they just start whistling and it just was turned to a whole party. And I was like, what is this? What is this? So yeah, it was super <laughs> funny. That's my favorite thing of the week. My table I had. They I love that. Night. Like working is already hard enough, but when you can have those little moments of joy mm -hmm. and community, you're just mm -hmm. like, wow, humans aren't so bad after all. Right. She was really sweet. She was, <laughs> they gave me a nice tip. She was really sweet. Oh, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We love that. We, we oh do. my god. And she was the birthday girl. She was the birthday <gasps> girl. And she said, you know what? She said, how long have you been serving? I said, just two years. She said, you do a phenomenal job. She said, I want to give you an extra tip. And she was so sweet. She didn't even pay because it was her birthday. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so oh my gosh shout out to that lady like you right. don't know you're not touching to you. these streets but right she came through she did she did she said i'm gonna have a ball she was she had to have been on one Hey guys, post-production Kristen stopping in again. At this point during the episode, the audio and the video cut out, but we had already gotten her favorite thing of the week. And afterwards I shared my favorite thing of the week. And it was a song called Whip It Up by Justine Skye. I have been a fan of hers for a while and I like her music, but it just, the recent music that she had dropped, I wasn't loving as much as I do this song. So you already know, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the favorite song of the week playlist if you haven't checked it out make sure you check that out you can find it under the playlist tab on my youtube channel and i think i have it linked on my link tree as well in my description and yeah this episode was a lot of fun to film i hope you guys enjoyed it deja's super great she's just got such good energy so i enjoyed myself a lot thank you guys for your patience with the quality and the episode cutting out and everything i apologize for that but nonetheless it was still a lot of fun and like I mentioned at the top of the episode, make sure you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. I'm on my road to my first 100 subscribers.
subscribers. Super excited about that. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you give me that five star rating and follow the podcast so that way you stay up to date with every new episode that drops on Fridays. And if you're listening on Apple Podcast, thank you. Shout out to you. Make sure you go ahead and give me that five star rating while you're at it and give me a review to let me know what was your favorite part about this week's episode. So again, thanks for your patience. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Fully cause I make it shut with y'all. Save your breath, baby. I'm not going home with y'all.